I think when I'm uh, 80 years old, 85 hopefully, I'll be pushed around in a wheelchair by a red-headed nurse with panty outline. She'll make me little tequila sunrises and I'll read my complete works then and I'm, then I'll decide whether I think I've done something good or not. I'll reserve my judgment till then. I know Remington's have played a focal point in some of your past books. Well, I owned a, an electric Remington briefly, but we had a turbulent relationship. It made so much noise, it hummed all the time. It was like it was looking over your shoulder, egging you on, wanting you to work at a far faster pace than I am capable of working. And plus it was ugly, it was some strange off blue kind of teal color. Eventually I just took a two by four and destroyed it. I work now with pen and paper. That's my favorite way to write. I love the way the ink sinks into the wood, soaks into the wood pulp. There's something about that process that's so organic. I like to go back to the, the raven quill, actually, dipped in lizard blood or something, right on orange butcher paper. <laughs> mm -hmm. I started writing when I was five years old. I would dictate stories to my mother and she would copy them in a scrapbook. If she changed anything to make it, in her opinion, better, I would throw a tantrum. I can't remember exactly the first thing I wrote, but one of the stories was about a pilot whose plane crashed on a desert island, and the only other life on the island was a brown cow with yellow spots, and the cow had to survive had taught itself to eat and get nutrients from sand. So I guess uh, I've always been interested in um, adaptability and taking whatever life hands you and, uh, and running with it. And at first I think I was interested in the stories and uh, later on I became more interested in the language itself. So the stories became almost secondary. But it was kind of uh, background music for my life. I had a, a stick and I used to go out in the backyard and fantasize, often aloud. And as I would tell these stories, I would beat the ground with the stick. And then even today, when I get excited about an idea when I'm writing, I often will pace the room and I'll, be, I'll slap my, my legs. I've always been too ashamed to uh, talk about this bizarre behavior, but I was telling my paramour about it and she said well you were drumming and that hadn't occurred to me before and it's exactly what i was doing was drumming out the story setting a, a, up a rhythm behind the story there's not a a word in one of my books that hasn't been gone over 25 30 35 40 times i read every sentence over and over again and rework it and not particularly looking for a more shining truth, but looking for the right rhythm. It's like compulsive hand washing or something. Words on a page can hypnotize you if the rhythm is right. I never outline, I don't work from an outline. I have no idea where the book is going. I mean, even two thirds of the way through, I don't know how it's going to end. If I knew how it was going to end, I probably wouldn't write it. I, I finish the book so I can see how it's going to end. I write that first sentence, and if it's the right first sentence, it leads to the right second sentence, and three years later, you have a 500-page manuscript. But it really is like going on a trip, going on a journey. It's a voyage. finished my second book, I looked in the mirror and I was all pale and wan and emaciated and bags under my eyes and I said, what you need, Tom, is a trip up the Amazon. Three days later I got an offer to take a, a trip up a river in Africa. It wasn't the Amazon, but it was close. Uh, ever since, whenever I finish a book, I go off and have some kind of adventure. 
having had an adventure in my riding chair on my riding sofa, uh, an internal adventure, then I need to balance that off with an external adventure. So I'll go uh, tramping through Africa or whitewater rafting or float to Hawaii in a martini shaker or something. Mm -hmm.